this all-time great of his sport will be the subject of the biography round on Sports Challenge. Last week's champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, Lynn Dawson, Willie Lanier, and Otis Taylor meet the challenge of the world champion 1951 Los Angeles Rams, Glenn Davis, Norm Van Brocklin, and Tom Pierce. And now, here is the host of Sports Challenge, Dick Enberg. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and from coast to coast around the world, welcome to Sports Challenge. This week, our champion Kansas City Chiefs meet the challenge of the world champion Los Angeles Rams. And and each team is competing for $1,000 worth of AMF Voight Sports Equipment. Runners-up play for $500 worth. John? This week, the Kansas City Chiefs are playing for the Boys Club of Bloomington, Bloomington, Indiana. And the world champion 1951 LA Rams represent the Whittier School of Oakland, California. Voight, from basketball to bowling, scuba gear to golf, Voight stands for durability and consumer value. And it's been that way for 50 years. Okay, Dick. Our first category is record breakers and a look at the passing combination of Van Brocklin to Fears. Right after this sports challenge time out. Is there like... The challenge of the Los Angeles Rams. First category men, record breakers, and two of our panelists who hold all-time NFL passing marks. Norm Van Brocklin for the most yards passing in one game, 554, and Tom Fears for an incredible 18 catches in one game. Now let's watch them together in the 1951 NFL title game. Time running out here at the Coliseum. The Rams are tied with the Cleveland Browns at 17 apiece. Van Brocklin from the 19 sets the line and gives to Glenn Davis, sweeping to the outside at the 20. Rolled out of bounds at the 22-yard line. The 1951 title game in the balance. Norm Van Brocklin back to throw. Looks left, pumps once, throws downfield. Tom Fierce behind the defense. He's beaten Warren Lahr at the 50. Down the sideline, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Rams. They beat the Browns for the 51 title. And that one play gave the Los Angeles Rams their only NFL title. Norm Van Brocklin, as we said, once threw for 554 yards in one game. Only one other player in NFL history has thrown for more than 500 yards in a single game. That's your 20-point toss-up. Name that other quarterback. More than 500 yards in one game. We'll give you a clue. He's a former giant. Otis Taylor. Y.A. Y.A. Tittle is correct for 20 points. And a true sign to two free throws. Yeah. A remarkable record in basketball was set by a man who already holds more records than any other player in NBA history. Here's Chick Hearns. Coming right to left across your dial, or make it left to right across your dial. Top of the key, it's a trap. In low to Wilt. Here he goes for 30,000. Finger roll, one footer, no good. Tipped by Wilt, no good. But it counts. It counts. Is that some way to get your 30,000 points? <laughs> Now they'll stop the game here. They'll stop the game and announce that Wilt has reached that plateau. The big fella, 30,000 points. That's 5,500 more points than anyone else in history. After Robinson at number two. Believe it or not, among the staggering records held by Wilt, who is, you know, is a notoriously bad free throw shooter, is he has the record for the most free throws made in one game for 10 points. Was it 22, 25, no. 28, or 31? The NBA record most free throws. Five seconds. Take again. 22. 22 is incorrect. So the Rams, you get 20 points if you can tell me Will Chamberlain's free throw record in one game. 22, 25, 28, or 31? Five seconds. All right, we'll, we'll try 28. 28 is correct for 20 points. We have a tie game at 2020. Free throw, however, belongs to Kansas City. A man who holds many AFL passing records is our panelist, Lenny Dawson, of the Chiefs. And some of his past plays in his repertoire could be called Invitation to the Dance. From his own 31, the great Lenny Dawson back to throw. Looking on the far sidelines for Elmo Wright. Arches one, complete at the 43-yard line. Wright skips over one tackler, 35, 30, 25, 20. Elmo Wright with a 69-yard touchdown, and he's got him dancing in Kansas City. It's, it's not true, Lenny, that you taught uh, Elmo Wright that little dance, is it? No, that, I'm of a different era, Richard. <laughs> uh, the free throw belongs to the Kansas City Chiefs. Another touchdown pass completion for Dawson for 10 points. 
What quarterback holds the all-time mark completing touchdown passes in 47 straight games? Incredible. Johnny Unitas. Five seconds. Johnny Unitas. Johnny Unitas is correct from 56 through 1960. He threw a touchdown pass in every game, 47 in a row. So after one round, the score is the Kansas City Chiefs 30 and the Los Angeles Rams 20. Your toss-up in a new category, the turning point. And in the NFL, when you force the other team to play catch-up, you've reached a turning point in that game. Cowboys on the march. They lead 3-0 late in the first half here in Super Bowl VI. Staubach throws. Allworth with a leaping catch, and the Cowboys have a first down on a 21-yard pass play. Staubach to Allworth. Just a bit more than a minute left from the seven-yard line of Miami. Staubach to throw, looking into the end zone. Allworth brushes the flag, touchdown, and that's the turning point in this big game. Allworth with two great catches, and the Cowboys lead 10-0 at the half. That touchdown pass was the turning point of the game and also was Allworth's first Super Bowl touchdown. You're a 20-point toss-up. What veteran Green Bay end subbing for Boy Dollar scored the very first touchdown? McGee. Lenny Max Dawson. McGee. Max McGee is correct. You got to hit the buzzer, Tom. <laughs> you have the answer. <laughs> Lenny Dawson gets it for the is, Chiefs. Is mine right Free throw belongs to. Let's try that. Make sure yours is working, Tom Fears. Let's see. Yeah, uh, it's it's all right. All right. Next time, hit that first. Free throw to Kansas City. This turning point came very early in a World Series game. Keep in mind that this happened in the top of the first inning at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. First inning, hop the hitter, ground ball up the middle. Don Guthridge to his right, off his glove, base hit for Johnny Hunt. And here comes Stan the Man Musial. Jakuki with a pitch. Musial swings and sends a high, deep drive to right. It's over the right field pavilion, a home run. Hop scores, and here comes Musial. The Cardinals jump off to a 2 0 lead, go on to win it 5 1, and this 1944 series is tied at two games apiece. Kansas City for 10 points. What team did the Cardinals defeat in that 1944 World Series? Five seconds. Four. The Yankees. Yankees incorrect. So for 20 <laughs> points, Rams in 1944, it was the Cardinals against the other St. Louis team, Browns. The St. Louis Browns is correct, Norm Van Brocklin. After uh, one free throw, a 50 40 score belongs to the Kansas City Chiefs, and this time it's the 1971 Pro Bowl game. The score early in the fourth quarter, NFC 13, AFC 6, then the turning point. Here's Chuck Benedict. The AFC has the ball on its own 35. Fourth and 10, Gerald Wilson of Kansas City, back to punt, gets off a long spiral, going straight up the field. Mel Renfro waits for it at the 20. It bounces, he picks it up at the 18, goes between two blockers, sets sail upfield. He's headed for midfield and picks up another blocker. Mel Renfro into AFC territory. He's being chased, but he swings behind a blocker. He's in open field at the 15, the 10, he's gonna score. He crosses the goal. Mel Renfro of Dallas scores for the NFC, and the AFC will have to play catch up. Mel Renfro of Dallas also has been our superb receptor, leading the NFL in 1969 with 10. For 10 points, who set a new pro mark in 1971? I'm sorry, Tom Pierce, it belongs to the Kansas City Chiefs. Who set a new pro mark? At, we at least know that your buzzer works now. In 1971, with nine touchdowns, interceptions, interceptions, and nine touchdowns. Ken Houston. Ken Houston of Houston is correct for 10 points, and after two rounds, the score. The Kansas City Chiefs 60, the Los Angeles Rams 40, and we'll be back with a thrilling tribute to the great Roy Campanella right after this sports challenge. Nine rounds. At the halfway mark, our defending champion Kansas City Chiefs lead the Los Angeles Rams 60 for the Chiefs. The Rams have 40, a new category, unforgettable moments. And on this night of emotion, men, there were 93,000 baseball fans, the largest in the history of baseball, at the Los Angeles Coliseum, 1959, as we join Vin Scully. Right now, the Yankees have been asked to leave the field, and the Dodgers are not out on the field. For right now, the Coliseum, all of the lights will be turned out as Pee Wee Reese wheels the chair that holds Roy Campanella across the first base foul line and heads him towards the pitcher's mound. The of lights at the Coliseum, perhaps the most beautiful and dramatic moment in the history of sports. Let there be a prayer for every light. And wherever you are, maybe you in silent tribute to Campanella can also say a prayer for his well-being. Roy Campanella, for thousands of times, made a trip to the mound to help somebody out. 
a tired pitcher, a disgusted youngster, a boy who perhaps had his heart broken in a game of baseball. And tonight, on his last trip to the mound, the city of Los Angeles says hello to him. A great call by Ben Stella and some of the highly taxed night of emotion for Los Angeles fans. It's a toss-up, 20 points. Roy Campanella was a three-time winner of the Most Valuable Player Award. He also broke the previous home run record for catchers, 41 in a season. The old record, 37, set by a former Chicago Cub catcher and manager, Norm Van Brocklin. Gabby Hartnett. Gabby Hartnett is correct. We were going to ask who was that catcher. <laughs> we have a tie game, 60-60. Free throws belong to the Rams. You get this an moment here <laughs> is unforgettably in the record books. It's the 1950 NFL championship game, the Rams and the Browns. For the very first scrimmage play, here's the voice of Bob Kelly. First and ten, right half back. Smith motion right water field, fades back the pass. Fades way back to his eight, looks once, throws long. Davis is out in front, catches him on the 50. I believe he's going to score a touchdown. The 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. And he's over in the Rams, right in front, 6 to nothing. <laughs> what do you know about that? On the first play of scrimmage of the ball game. <laughs> first play of scrimmage. And, Glenn, that still is the longest uh, touchdown in the history of the NFL game. And you were so wide open. Can you recount what happened? They had a linebacker trying to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> those big linebackers make little men run very fast, don't they? Right. All right, your question is, involving teams of players, uh, Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard involved in a great tandem at Army. Uh, the pass-catching team, Waterfield to Davis in this case. Also, uh, Graham in that game had Lavelli and Speedy as his pass-catching team. Don Hudson, the record-setting Packer receiver, teamed with two great passers. Arnie right. Herber was one. You get ten points if you can name the other. Cecil Isbell. Cecil Isbell is correct, the quarterback <laughs> identifying the quarterback. Second free throw. Perhaps there never has been a more dramatic event in sports than Jesse Owens' accomplishments in the 1936 Olympiad in Berlin. While the free world watched and a tyrant scowled, America's Jesse Owens sought a gold medal in the 100-meter dash. No starting blocks, just dirt and superb competition. Jesse Owens' voice recalls that unforgettable moment. This is it. A lifetime of training for just 10 seconds. Schronberg. Wyckoff. Medcat. Bruce Myers. Celtic. I beat Medcat by a yard. Ozendorf third. Wyckoff fourth. Bruce Myers fifth. Stronberg sixth. As you know, this has been a great show to do, and especially fun for me, as in most part, these are the idols, my idols as a kid, that were able to ask questions, too. But it's moments like that that make this really a very exciting show and a pleasant one to be associated with. I think you all feel that way. Your question for 10 points. How many gold medals did Jesse Owens win in the 1936 Olympic Games? You have three. five seconds. Four. Four or three. I heard both. Four. Four is correct. The quarterback overrules his end, and he is right. The 100 meters, the 200 meters, the long jump, and he also won a gold medal as a participant on the 400-meter relay team. So after three rounds, the score is now the Rams in the lead. Los Angeles 80 and the Kansas City Chiefs 60. Your toss-up, men. Unexpected is the category, and uh, part of a good quarterback strategy is to create the unexpected with the ball and the lead. The fake to Fotelak and Dawson gives to Taylor on the end around. Taylor at the 30 to the 25, up the sidelines at the 20. Taylor at the 15, behind blockers at the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Otis Taylor and the Chiefs lead 22 to 10 here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Lenny Dawson, before we go to that question, uh, that's a play that the Chiefs have worked very effectively in big games. Is there a way of setting up uh, that play so it's so effective? Yes, you ask the linebacker and the defensive end on that side if they might uh, oblige you by going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you... <laughs> huh? And Otis does a pretty good job of carrying it once he has that. Once hand. I give it to him, he's on his own. All right, your question. 
20 points to the toss-up. The end around play, just as you have just seen, is remindful of the old wing-back reverse in single wing football. For your 20 points, what was the last team in the NFL to use the single wing? Norm Van Brocklin. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers is correct. Lenny Dawson knows he was there just a little bit after. They discontinued the use in 1951. The single wing has not been dead that long. Free throw to the Rams. Here's an unexpected, incredible finish in goal. 1953, Tam O'Shanter. Lou Worsham, 140 yards away from the 18th hole, needs a birdie to tie Chandler Harper, who has already finished his final round. Lou Worsham on 18. He's using a wedge. Needs to get down and two to tie, about 140 yards out. That's a good-looking shot. It's right at the flag. A big hop, and it's rolling, 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 and in! An eagle! An eagle for Lou Worsham! He's won! At that time, of the three major U.S. tournaments, two were based on medal play, one still on match play. Ten points, name the tournament that was still decided on match play. You have five seconds. U.S. Open? No. Try the U.S. Open. U.S. Open is incorrect. So for 20 points, Kansas City. Of the three tournaments, still at that time, 1953, one was based on match play, man against man. Can you give me the name of that tournament? PGA. PGA is correct for 20 points. The Chiefs pulled within 20. The free throw belongs to Los Angeles. Hall of Famer Ducky Medwick of the St. Louis Cardinals batted 379 in the 34 World Series, but became the only man ever to be removed from game action by the baseball commissioner. Let's listen to the Gas House Gang teammate, Leo DeRocher. House gang lacked in talent. They made up and got it. In the last game, we were winning nine to nothing, but still Medwick started the fight, sliding in the third. When Medwick got back to the outfield, the Detroit fans were ready for him. They threw everything they could lay their hands on. I don't even know where they got half the stuff. Kennesaw Mountain Landis was commissioner of baseball, and the old judge called Frisch and Medrick over. He asked Ducky if he had kicked the Tiger third baseman. Medrick said, yeah, but that's the way I always slide. Judge Landis ordered Medrick out of the game, but not for fighting. He was the only man ever thrown out of a World Series for his own protection. Frankie Frisch was the playing manager of the winning Cardinals. You saw him in that clip. For 10 points, who was the playing manager for the Tigers in the 34 series? Five seconds. Mm. Time is up. So for 20 points and a chance to tie the game, Kansas City, give me the name of the 1934 Detroit Tiger <laughs> playing manager. A Hall of Famer. The answer, Black Mike, Mickey Cochran, Mickey Cochran, the catcher. So after four rounds, we have a great game. The challengers, the Los Angeles Rams 100, the Kansas City Chiefs 80, and we're very pleased to let you know that win or lose, all our panelists will receive the brand new Mattel Sports Challenge Instant Replay Quiz Game to enjoy at home. And we'll be back with our 60-point biography round right after this Sports Challenge timeout. Well, I after four rounds, the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending champions, trailing the Los Angeles Rams, the Rams 100, the Chiefs 80. And time now for our biography round worth 60 points. And as you know, we have to go to great extents in security to keep our mystery guests away from our panelists. They're all basically close friends, and we try to hide our mystery guests. But sometimes that guest gets away, and you can imagine in his career how tough it was to guard this man because you just never knew quite where to find him. Well, we find him, found him today talking with some of our panelists, so we're going to have to reverse our order on our 60-point quiz. We'll do it first by introducing to you one of the all-time greats in National Basketball Association history, the star guard of the Boston Celtics, Mr. Bob Cousy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, welcome to Sports Challenge. Thank you. You gave him that little behind-the-back dribble, and uh, a couple of the fellas saw you. So we're going to play a different game for our panelists. We're going to give you 60 seconds, and we'll ask you this question, men. During his career, Bob Cousy once won the NBA's Outstanding Player Award and the All-Star Game MVP Award both in the same year. For 60 points, name that year, and we'll give you some clues. Start the clock. In that year, Milwaukee won the World Series in seven games from the Yankees. 
In that year, the NBA's Rookie of the Year was Tom Heinsohn. That year was the rookie year for an NFL quarterback who later became the league's most valuable player, John Brody. Stop, Lenny Dawson. 1957. 1957 is correct. The Chiefs are champions again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you're looking, you're the same time. Of course, Lenny Dawson was what? Uh, rookie uh, the year before. Were you not, or were you a rookie too that season? Well, I must confess, John and I graduated the same year. That's right. So Lenny Dawson remembers 57 well. Bob Cousy, in 1957, one of your many great years with the Celtics, and truly that was one of the dynasties that I suppose uh, you'll cherish those memories forever. Right, Dick. That was the first year, as you mentioned, Tom Heinsohn joined the team, and of course Bill Russell, and that was the start of 13 uh, really exceptional years for the Celtics. They won, I guess, 11 out of 13. Uh, and this is what it's all about. It was about as big a thrill, I, I'm sure, for all the players of, the, of that era. Bob, thank you for being with us on Sports Channel. Thank you, Bob. Bob Cousy, ladies and gentlemen, and fans in a moment, we'll tell you about all of our winners and next week's challengers. First, this Sports Challenge timeout. So the Kansas City Chiefs are winners again, and with a final score, here's John. Well, it's true, Dick. The winners of this sports challenge are the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Boys Club of Bloomington, Bloomington, Indiana, for whom they were playing, will receive $1,000 worth of A&F Boyd athletic equipment. Of course, there are no losers on sports challenge. The Whittier School of Oakland, California, whom the LA 1951 LA Rams represented, will receive $500 worth of athletic equipment from sports challenge. By the way, if you have a junior athletic organization you'd like represented, drop a line to sports challenge, 5800 Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, California. Now, since the Kansas City Chiefs have won again this week, they'll return next week. And Dick, who's going to be here to challenge them? Well, the team that will try to stop them, challengers, will be the New York Yankees. Greats, Lefty Gomez, Joe DiMaggio, and Tommy Henrik. They'll join our current champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yours truly, Dick Hamburg. We'll see you all again next week on Sports Challenge.